pretty happy to hear that the age limit has been lowered to 30. Uh, it's really important to remember that the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, was authorized in Canada by Health Canada to be safe and effective in those who are over age 18. The actual study of the AstraZeneca vaccine was done on those who are over 18. And so uh, really happy to see the age being lowered to 30. However, I have to say I am, I am disappointed uh, to hear uh, the way they communicated the, the idea of, you know, potentially waiting for another vaccine if you don't feel that this vaccine that is being offered to you, i.e. AstraZeneca, um, is safe enough. You know, if they talk about the risk perception and, 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 you know, what your individual risk. The reality is the situation in Ontario is out of control. The situation in Quebec, out of control. The situation in Saskatchewan, out of control. The situation in BC and Alberta, out of control. So, you know, there, there isn't an area in Canada, really, aside from the Atlantic bubble, um, where the situation is, is really uh, low risk, where you could afford to uh, wait for your vaccine. And uh, many of the follow-up questions that they were asked um, pressed particularly on that point. And I have to say, as, as, as a physician and as someone who's working in the ICU, um, uh, my advice would be take the vaccine and take the first vaccine that's offered to you. I mean, given the urgency of what we're seeing in places, and as you're rightly pointing out, you know, BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Ontario, Quebec, we're seeing a spike in Nova Scotia as well. Do you worry that sometimes in this country, uh, Dr. Uh, Masri, you know, to be blunt, we are sometimes a little too cautious. We play it a little too safe. Again, given the urgency of what we're seeing. Absolutely. I mean, we're seeing that on, on many fronts. You know, yesterday we heard about you know, international flights being shut down from Pakistan and India really cautiously instead of something that should have happened many weeks ago and much more broader than those two countries. We're seeing that again, same thing here today. You know, we're talking about four blood clots. Uh, two of those individuals were not even hospitalized. Um, and we're talking about, you know, uh, hundreds of people who are going to die from COVID-19 that could be saved, you know, in the in the clinical study about uh, that's conducted by AstraZeneca, um, there was a hundred percent reduction, hundred uh, percent reduction in hospitalized severe hospitalization and death, and so we are being too cautious, um, and uh, and we are not really uh, looking at the reality. We, you know, I, my fear is that these recommendations are not looking at real life. We have. Young here in Saskatchewan, we have the statistics on the on the on the variants. Um, more than fifty percent of the cases are variants. Uh, compared to the previous wave, we have hundred percent increased hospitalization. Uh, we have sixty six percent increase in need for ICU, um, and significant increase in death in the sixty percent range. So these recommendations don't match reality. The recommendation should be. Uh, uh, should match reality. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, we are very transparent about the possibility of having a blood clot maybe being associated with this. But we're talking about four blood clots in the entire country that maybe, it's not proven, maybe is associated with AstraZeneca. Yeah, it's such a great point. We do not know if those rare clots are linked to AstraZeneca. We know blood clots can happen, do happen for many reasons. Even COVID itself can cause blood clots. So we just want to be clear about that. People seem to sort of forget that and they start saying that AstraZeneca is causing blood clots. Of course, that is not the case. There's no evidence of that. And these remain extremely rare. As I said, you know, one in a million is the number of cases uh, that we're looking at here. I also wonder about something else, and you and I have spoken a lot about messaging here, and, and frankly, what is sometimes clumsy messaging on the part of well-meaning public health officials. But when you see NACI, and you see the Public Health Agency of Canada, and you see Health Canada, and you see the provincial authorities in each province, does it sometimes seem like there are too many cooks in the kitchen? Absolutely. I mean, the, the reality is that uh, mixed messages uh, is, is it, you know, the public looks at, 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 the, at officials uh, to try to understand the situation, understand the seriousness of the situation. And when they hear that their public uh, officials are saying, you know, if you feel that you could delay this vaccine, then you, you can, that's an option. Then the perception that people are getting that this is not a serious situation and that uh, they will just go ahead and wait. And so 
messaging is extremely damaging. We saw that in many provinces when premiers did not communicate properly to uh, the citizen of each province that the situation is serious. People are less likely to take uh, you know, public health measures seriously. The people are less likely to take the vaccine. So messaging is extremely damaging. And I have to say that listening to that uh, 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 you know, pr press conference, um, I find the messaging to be extremely problematic. As you know, I'm very active on social media. Uh, while that press conference was happening, I received over uh, 10 messages saying, Doc, does that mean I could wait and delay my AstraZeneca vaccine? There are real life consequences to poor messaging. And, and unfortunately, I have to say, um, you know, in the last two weeks, I have diagnosed in my own ICU, um, and, you know, that's a small percentage of the whole country, more blood clots, uh, life threatening blood clots, than blood clots that are maybe associated with AstraZeneca. Getting COVID is a very serious issue. 16%, uh, uh, you know, um, risk of developing life-threatening blood clots with that. Uh, the, the messaging has to be very clear. We have to be very clear uh, with our fellow citizens about what's at stake uh, and what is the risk and why is there an urgency to take this vaccine.